been 40 years since the uh, army commander, the very brave and gallant man who was loved by many of his folks and the junior ranks who served under him. He was known as the Major General, uh, some say Neville, some say Neville, uh, Alexander Odati Wellington. And his daughters join me here. Esther Odati Wellington is my guest. Madam, good morning. Thank you very good much. Good morning, for your time. sir. Deepest condolences to you. 40 years on, what's the feeling like? It seems as if it happened yesterday. Mm. Uh, my father's spirit is always with us. Mm. And of course, uh, the pain is aggravated by the fact that um, my father's uh, accomplishments or what he stood for, mm. those things have not been recognized and consequently he has not been honored as mm. he deserves to be. Right. Even after the recommendations by the National Reconciliation Commission. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. It's been it's been difficult, but one has moved on somewhat. Mm. Yes, I read in the in the brochure that uh, I got yesterday that even at the thirty seven military hospital, when you had gone to pick his remains after the execution, yes, um, you were forbidden to cry. Why so? Your guess is as good as mine, uh, but I think uh, that uh, perhaps. Uh, they were embarrassed and didn't want a noise. They didn't want us to draw any, you know, attention. Mm. And it, it was not even that they forbade us to cry, but uh, we went to the hospital a few times because they mm. might say, they would say to us, oh, you will get the body today and you can mm. have a memorial, a, a, a wake keeping and mm. we'll prepare for it. And it wouldn't happen. It happened mm. about three times mm. until we actually uh, got the body. Got the body. Yeah, yes, eventually. yes, yes. Mm. Uh, having said that, there was a state burial with uh, full military honours. Right. So it makes it even uh, doubly strange mm. that uh, the general has still not been honoured mm. uh, after all that. The, yes. the, the recommendations of the National Reconciliation Commission was clear. Yes. Uh, and that dates of far back uh, the early days of President Kufo's governance. Yes. Why, why has he still not been honoured in spite of the recommendation of a committee of that uh, magnitude and weight? I, I, I really, the mind boggles. Have you I, asked questions about it? I, I didn't even know until last year mm. that uh, my father uh, had been cited in the report mm. and that uh, it had been recommended that he be honored alongside certain people. I didn't right. know that until last year. Mm. Uh, but the person that brought it to my attention uh, told me that he had asked questions, mm -hmm. he'd gone Oh, and he didn't get a clear answer. Mm. Having said that, the report has still not been published, so far as I know, right. although there was a government white paper, mm. nothing has happened. So okay. I think the first thing is to publish the report and disseminate it, mm. that is it. Yes, uh, and I cite uh, Sierra Leone where a similar thing mm. happened mm. and I think it was UNICEF that uh, helped the country to uh, simplify the report okay. and um, disseminate it in all the schools uh, mm. to start with mm. so that people would know and not repeat okay. those things in future. I see, yeah. interesting. You, you, we will talk about his achievements but on that fateful day, yes. uh, when he was gruesomely murdered at the Nima police station yes. on a rainy day. That's uh, correct. Where were you at the time and how did you receive the news? Um, I um, was uh, in boarding school. Mm. I was writing my O levels at right. the time. Mm. I um, didn't hear of it the day that it happened mm. because. Uh, my friends in the boarding house, uh, mm. they um, disconnected uh, the, the, the television or radio or mm -hmm. whatever. So mm. it was a few days afterwards, but in the middle of the exams, that okay. I uh, got to hear of it. Mm. Yes, that's right. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So, so when you heard about it finally, that here was a man who was not a coward, who mm. was the army mm. general, mm. Uh, who in spite of the fact that the brigade commander at the time re refused to pick a call to attend to duty. Mm. Mm. And he put on a full regalia 
and went out to kill the June 1979 uh, coup d'etat. Yes, yes. And met his untimely death. How did you feel about it? Well, on a personal level, you know, because I'm a daughter first, so that, that was very, very, very difficult okay. to um, accept. Um, on the other hand, I was proud that my father had done his duty, that he didn't shirk uh, from his responsibilities, mm -hmm. and that uh, he went out as the soldier that he mm -hmm. was and had always been, and that he died in the course of duty. Mm -hmm. So I was proud of him then, but the pain, of course, it was something else, and it's still something else. They call him Susum Soja yeah. Manche, Soja Hene. That's, that's what his contemporaries call him, all the generals or the colonels and everybody else yes, called him yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. What are some of the great achievements or, if you like, fond memories that you want to share with us uh, on this day about Susum, who had, you know, a lot of charisma, a lot of presence, but had a great sense of humor? Yes. Um, he was a loving father. He was a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. And he w was interested that we, we did in us that we did, you mm. know, very well okay. in, in life. Mm. And he was proud of his humble origins. Mm. And he, you know, brought, brought himself up and done a good job mm. of it. And he, he wanted us to do uh, well too. And that is what I remember a loving father, a responsible mm. father. Mm and just a great, uh, a great uh, person. And was he strict yeah. at home? He was strict everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So uh, the, the former President Rawlings, yes. uh, I would like to draw him into the conversation mm -hmm. at this point. Yes. Uh, what's your relationship now with, with uh, the Rawlingses? I have never had a relationship with Mr. Rawlings, no. Why not? Why would you have, I? You haven't forgiven uh, all the perpetrators of, of that uh, heinous activity or crime? When you say forgiven, what, what do you mean? Co forgiveness comes from God, and okay. God is the one who gives us the grace to forgive, and vengeance is the Lord's. So I'm not going to get will you, will it. You so shake, will you shake his hands? I mean, your brother was uh, picked up by the BNI when he was on GTV at the time, yeah. trying to uh, correct some erroneous impression. Yes. He later went to Canada. He had to push that information again. Yes. And and he called Ex-President Rollins a corn man at the time. But he is. Um, well, <laughs> would you shake his hands, for example, if you met him at the, at the public ceremony, if he comes to St. Catherine's Church today? Just for a moment, imagine yourself hmm, as an Odati Wellington or as a Wutuka. Somebody takes your father and you know marches and ties him to the stake hmm. and shoots him. How would you feel? Would you embrace them? Would you? That's my answer to you. Let's talk about achievements of the great general. Yes. Um, what do you remember uh, and what have we not been told as, as Ghanaians in our social studies books and our history books? What is that single thing that you want to put out there as one of his greatest achievements that has not been told yet? Um, the whole, shall I say, it's not a story, but what happened on June 4th mm. and the general's role mm. has not been properly articulated, there is a lot of misinformation. Mm. The general did not get into an armored car and all guns blazing, okay. gun people down mm. at a um, uh, broadcasting house mm. or anywhere else. The general was in fact uh, very keen mm. to uh, preserve lives. Okay. When mm. the general mm. went to the broadcasting house, Mm -hmm. He did not gun anyone down there. In okay. fact, when the general left the broadcasting house mm -hmm. and went to the mm, police headquarters, which mm -hmm. was his command center, right. there, he was there with a few officers, mm -hmm. and there were Air Force planes flying over, mm -hmm. and they wanted to bomb that place because okay. they were so sure that if he died, mm -hmm. they would succeed. And so General Odati Wellington decided okay. to leave the... Uh, 
police headquarters mm -hmm. uh, to preserve lives, even when his soldiers told him, stay, sir, we will protect you. Right. When the general, so he left just to preserve, save lives. And the general went to the Nima police station. He didn't go there. He was unarmed. Mm. He was with his Edcon, his or ADC, ADC right. and his bodyguard. Mm. He was not armed, but he was in full military mm. gear. He went in there. He did not go shooting anybody. He was unarmed. And I want to state that it was a group of drunken soldiers mm. who went there and started shooting indiscriminately. And then he was mortally wounded. So all these things you hear about uh, the general shot so many people is not true. Mm. As a matter of fact, when he lay mortally wounded, he said to Captain Opoku, mm. his ADC, Surrender. surrender. Right. He said, you young men, I don't want you to lose your lives. Mm. And if you listened to or remember the broadcast at Broadcasting House, uh, first he said this thing had been quelled, and then the subsequent broadcast said everybody should return to their units right. and would Rawlings and his acolytes meet me at one brigade headquarters mm. at Peishi Ridge to, uh, to talk about okay. this, mm. right? So the general did not go shooting people and killing people. He w I, I would uh, actually say that he sacrificed mm. himself to save Ghana and mm. to save the Ghana armed forces mm. and to save lives. I, I get a sense the family is not excited about the turn of activities and you know flowing events from that. What would make the family happy as we mark 40 years of his demise? It would be great if uh, the military <clears throat> and the country would recognize the role that General Odati Wellington played on June 4 mm. and even before. I think it would be a great start okay. if the recommendations mm. in the National Reconciliation Commission mm -hmm. could be made public mm. or could be disseminated okay. and then talk to us to mm -hmm. find out what would be an appropriate honor for General Lodate Wellington. Mm -hmm. That would be a great start and right. would make us feel that our father's death had not be, has not been in vain. Right. At the moment, we don't think so and we don't feel loved at all. Great. And the National Reconciliation Commission report uh, stated that, well, the late Major General uh, together with Major Abubakar Suleimana, Major Ab Ab Abraham Ryder, and Captain Ben Dria. Also, uh, Major Mahmoud Sita and W01 Joseph Mensah should be honored uh, for their role in trying to foil the June 1979 uh, coup. But, yes. Madam, we're meeting at St. Catherine this morning. That's why you're in white. Yes. Uh, what are we celebrating? Right. And finally, at what time are we meeting? Yes. Um, my fellow service uh, brothers and sisters mm. have come together to hold a Thanksgiving and memorial service mm. for our fathers. And this will start at 9 a.m. Okay. At uh, St. Catherine's Church. Mm at Burma camp okay and everyone is welcome mm. to come and the dress code is white and so yes you're right mm. that's why I'm uh, in white and the theme for this service is okay. of this program is never again never again never again thank you very much yes. madam Estelle Dati Wellington is the daughter of the respected general the major general uh, Alexander Odati Wellington. Now, they're celebrating today uh, the well, is it eight? Wow, well, Lieutenant General A. A. Free General uh, Achampon, Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Akufu, Major General uh, Kote, also Brig uh, Rear Admiral Amedume, uh, Air Vice Marshal Boachi, Major General E. K. Utuka, Major General Odati Wellington himself, Colonel uh, Feli, and Colonel. Uh, in info, they are all being celebrated today at the St. Catherine um, uh, Church at Burma Camp.